think the first helicopter flight was in Connecticut. accident but they need critical care so we'll take them from the sending hospital to the receiving hospital and often it's you know brain bleed strokes somebody who has an organ donor card and they've met their end will transport that organ from a facility to a the, you know a transplant facility I mean obviously that has longer legs than what this thing can do but our average flight transit times are about 15 20 25 minutes when we receive a call, the only information I get is a patient weight and where they're coming from, where they're going to. That's it. And then I base my acceptance decision on, can I carry it weight-wise? What's the weather? And will the weather remain flyable for the duration of the mission? Because there, you don't want to assume more risk than what the outcome will be. You don't want to add to someone's tragedy by putting a crew or an aircraft at risk. It's just, it's not worth it. If we're flying a, a pediatric patient, most often you can expect the mom or the father or a family member to ride along. And so I'm trying to keep them as calm and collected as possible. The three things, aviate, navigate, communicate. Maintain that priority and you'll be fine. But if I know the folks in the back or maybe the patient's not doing well, I have to understand that, but I can't allow that to drive my decision making. It's always crew safety, aircraft safety, and then patient welfare in that order. It's a single pilot aircraft. There are so many recipients waiting for kidneys, hearts, lungs, whatever. It's a vital service. All right, she's ready to go fly. 